this video is probably going to be a little bit more of a rant than I normally do, but sometimes it's just pertinent. Sometimes you just gotta post a little bit of a ranty video. Over the last couple of weeks and even months, I have talked a lot, spent a lot of time on the subject of Android apps having compatibility with tablets. The ability to have an interface that makes sense on a screen of this size, these dimensions, and also an interface that makes sense on a screen of this size and or dimensions. I've talked about what Google is doing to push developers into that direction, to convince them that this is something that they should do, policy changes to the Play Store. Of course, we've talked about things like Android 12L and the sort of behind-the-scenes Android changes to support or to better support larger screens. We've talked about apps that have been updated on and on and on, but there is a particular subset of comments I've been getting quite a bit that I just, I have to push back against. When I outline the things that Google is doing to, we could say, encourage, we could say strong arm, we could say push, whatever you want to call it, encourage these developers to update their apps. And this could be in a couple of different ways, right? Some apps simply need auto-rotation turned on, so fixed rotation turned off would be the other way to say it. They also need to be able to be resized. So enable resizability, disable fixed rotation, and a lot of apps are now tablet ready, at least to some degree. Some apps will require a new interface. Anytime I talk about how apps, the developers of these apps, need to do this and how Google's pushing them, I get comments from people saying, no, 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 it's actually Google's fault because it's not easy enough for developers to get this done. And I do not agree. And I think that I have pretty darn good reason to not agree. I am not saying it couldn't be easier. I'm not saying that, right? That Google couldn't make it easier for developers. But the idea that it is so difficult now, currently, for a company like Meta or Twitter to get their app updated to work better on these larger screens, that they shouldn't be expected to get that done or that they can't get that done, I think is patently absurd. And I'm gonna give you one really like crystal clear example straight off the bat. I do not bank at a large bank, a nationwide bank. I bank at a credit union. You have to live around Knoxville to use this credit union, right? So they're not a big company. They're not some extravagant nationwide bank. And you know what happened the other day? They updated their app. And their app now, I can't show you this because it has my bank information on it. But what they've done is they've updated their app to do exactly what we're talking about. If you open it up on this screen, it's the phone app. When you open it up, you get a dual panel banking app with your accounts on one side and the transactions on the other. They got it done. This tiny little credit union that, again, only exists in East Tennessee, they got it done. They figured it out. But we're expected to think that it's too hard for us to reasonably expect that Meta can get it done, that Twitter can get it done, that Wise can get it done. It's too hard, or there's not enough of a return on that investment for them to go through this process. Mind you, a process that for a great many apps, like I described earlier, is as simple as disabling fixed rotation and enabling resizability, something that Google in their own video on this topic, I'll try to remember to link it down below, Say this could be a five minute fix or something like that. Maybe they don't say five minutes, but they basically outline that it is a very, very quick fix. I just think that that's baloney. Now let's look at a couple of these apps and let's think about how difficult it would be to get this done. Let's look at something like Twitter, which I refuse to call X. It will forever be Twitter in my heart and in my mind. If you go to the Twitter app and you open it up and you open it up on a tablet screen, it will either letterbox or pillar box, I guess is the correct term as I have been recently informed, or it will stretch across the screen. Now that may be okay in some instances, some instances 
If it's a multimedia tweet, it's going to be kind of a crummy experience. However, if you go to the Twitter website on your tablet, you'll get the desktop interface. And to be perfectly honest with you, it works great on these tablets. I have Twitter installed as a PWA progressive web app on my Pixel Fold, and it works beautifully that way. So why would Twitter not just take that exact interface as a PWA and just put that out as their tablet app? Instagram, go to their mobile website. It's the exact same scenario. The mobile version spans across the screen. The controls are on one side instead of up on the top and bottom. It works great. It works perfectly. Release that. Launch that as your tablet app. You're telling me that they can't figure out how to take an interface that they already have and make it so that when it detects that it is on a tablet display, it switches to that interface? You can't figure that out? I just think that that is absolute nonsense. These are massive companies. And if my local credit union can get it done, so can they. Again, Google needs to continue doing whatever they can to make this process as easy as possible because not all apps can simply be fixed with disabling fixed rotation and enabling resizability. Some of them will need a better or different layout and they need to do whatever they can to make that as easy as possible. But the idea that it is currently too difficult to be done by the vast majority of apps, I just don't think is backed up by anything at all. And I think that it is clear that some smaller apps, apps built by much, much, much smaller teams with much, much, much less funding have somehow found a way to do what these other massive developers can't. And let's be honest here, it's not because they can't, it's because they won't. They're actively choosing not to do this and it becomes a chicken or the egg type situation. Why aren't there as many tablet apps as there should be? Well, because the developers look at the amount of people that own tablets and they think this isn't necessarily currently worth our time or our investment to make apps to try and build up this product segment. Why do people not buy the tablet? Because they don't think there are enough apps to justify buying the tablet and it just goes in a circle. So someone has to break the cycle and Google appears to be doing what they can to do their part to push developers to stop doing this, stop being, look, I don't want to call them lazy, but like that's kind of what it feels like. Just actually do the thing, tick the couple boxes, get the app going. We also have all the momentum from foldables, which is kind of pulling more people into that tablet space than maybe there have been in years gone by. And because of this, I think that the future looks relatively bright for this stuff, even though some people want to put all the blame on Google, which I think is honestly kind of silly. Guys, thanks for watching my rant. Hopefully you found this somewhat uh, enjoyable. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.